This is True News, your alternative source for global news, analysis, and commentary. I'm Rick Wiles. The Washington Times reported several weeks ago that Florida Congressman Alan Grayson got a peek at the text of a super secretive treaty that the Obama White House has been negotiating. The congressman said that what he saw in the document is scary and he understands why it's being kept top secret. He described it as an attack on American democracy and U.S. sovereignty. Now, True News has repeatedly invited Congressman Grayson to appear on the program, but his office is ignoring us. Fortunately, Lori Wallach, director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, is not afraid of me, and she's on the telephone right now to tell us what she knows about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Lori has extensive knowledge and experience in analyzing international trade agreements. She's the author of numerous articles and books, most recently, Who's Trade Organization. She is also the founder and board member of Citizens Trade Campaign and founding board member of the International Forum on Globalization. The website for Public Citizen is citizen.org. Lori Wallach, welcome to True News. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, for some reason, Congressman Grayson uh, won't come on the program. He's been a guest in the past, but uh, on this topic, he is, um, he's gone uh, invisible. Um, how long have you known about this, uh, this particular tr- uh, treaty that's under uh, secret uh, negotiation, this Trans-Pacific Partnership? Well, there's been an attempt to do this kind of thing for a decade, more than a decade. The actual negotiation started in late 2008, and it's been incredibly secretive. As far as Grayson, you know, one of the reasons maybe he was ha- you're having a hard time tracking him down is because Congress is actually just crashing through the end of a session, and they just all ran out of town. Literally an hour ago, I was watching the mm-hmm. last vote. Um, he is the only member of Congress who's actually been able to force his way into seeing the tax. It's been kept totally secret. Other governments from Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, Chile, the other countries involved, their governments can see it. And there is a list of special advisors, which is mainly large U.S. multinational companies, a handful of labor unions who have been able to see it. But otherwise, all of us who are going to live with the results and the members of Congress who have constitutional authority over trade have been shut out. All right. So, Laurie, this is a, a, a trade treaty between the United States and multiple. Is it all are they all Asian countries? Well, here, here's the thing. It's a Pacific Rim. So it's Chile and it's Peru and it's Mexico and Canada, as well as a group of, of Asian countries. So the Sultanate of Brunei and Malaysia and Vietnam, Singapore, as well as Australia and New Zealand. The, the part about it, and Japan is just about to join. The, the part about it, though, is it's not really about trade. That's the brand name. It's being sold as trade, as free trade, and that is a brand that is appealing to a lot of people. But really what's in it is freedom to trade away our sovereignty and, well, really to sort of throw our jobs in the Pacific on the way over. It's a set of rules that is now in 29 chapters. It's a system of binding global government. And of those 29 big, thick chapters, I mean, you know, it's bigger than a big city phone book, only five of them have to actually do about trade. The other 24 chapters are imposing a form of international preemption. We are being told in an international government system what we have to do in the United States of America. And if we don't change all of our federal, state, and local laws to meet that, we face trade sanctions and can be dragged in front of international tribunals who can actually make us pay out of the U.S. Treasury to foreign companies. Now, you might think, all right, that lady has lost it, except that particular chapter leaked. That is the chapter on foreign investors' privileges, and we actually have that one. You can see it on our website, tradewatch.org. It's one of the very few pieces of this text that's actually been pried out of the secret process. Uh, Laurie, if it's not really about trade, then what is it about? I mean, is it uh, is this just, just another layer of global government coming into existence? Well, you know, it's interesting. This is the same model that, say, the World Trade Organization was built on. And the other day I was looking at something that Ron Paul had written when he was opposing these agreements and also the special procedures 
that presidents try to get to, to force these agreements through Congress. So there's a special procedure called fast track that basically crashes, destroys, shreds the checks and balances in the Constitution and upends the founders' sort of empowerment of Congress on trade issues. So looking at Ron Paul sort of describing it, yeah, he says, you know, what this is is if you wanted free trade, if you wanted free commerce, you would just have a rule that said, Everyone just get rid of your border taxes and your limits on imports and trade. But this is really in the brand name of free trade. It's like some huge global government Trojan horse. So there are all kinds of rules in here that, number one, can't get through the U.S. Congress in the sunshine. So, for instance, you can remember there was a big push that would undermine Internet freedom. It was kind of cynically branded the Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA. But it was opposed from everyone from libertarians to the ACLU as an invasion on our free speech and our access to freedom of information on the Internet. So there's a chunk of that that's stuck into the TPP in the copyright chapter. It would undermine Internet freedom. And then there's a chunk of um, – there was a bill that would require us to import food that didn't meet U.S. standards but met the foreign country standards and, you know – that's one of those issues Democrats, Republicans, and independents agree on. We don't want to have unsafe food being fed to our children. We do not want fish from, say, Vietnam grown in ponds that are fertilized with human feces. We do not want that coming in. Well, the TPP would require us to import that kind of fish from Vietnam and meat that doesn't meet our standards for safety, and we'd be forced to put it on our table and feed it to our kids. It would be considered a violation to even label it so we could distinguish if it was made here. Or there's a chapter in there that actually would say how we can or cannot spend our local tax dollars. We couldn't give preference to American companies and American workers. We'd have to send it off to, say, the Vietnamese and Chinese companies who'd be in this agreement. So that, that, um, that agenda of special interest, uh, you know, Wall Street loves this, for instance. All of the all of the big fat cat bankers love this because it's a way from their perspective to basically get the Main Street banks in the disadvantage they were in the global crisis and get the big fat cat guys basically bailed up by the government again. So they're, they are th – this is like the ugly bug ball of every rotten thing that couldn't get through Congress that has a big, powerful international interest to, it, in it. And basically, their idea is, you know, the things that can't get done in Congress, that can't get done in front of the American people, let's do it through this form of international government. But let's call it a trade agreement so that hopefully conservatives think they like it. Laura, Pretty cynical. I, I, um, over the 15 years of doing this radio program, I've, 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 we've talked about globalization a lot, and we've watched these things develop. It, it, it seems from my perspective that what, what is developing is, is global fascism. This is a merger of governments and major corporations that are behind the scenes making alliances and, and agreements to decide how the world is going to be run. And there's no respect uh, anymore for national borders or parliaments or the will of the people of individual nations. These decisions are now being made at a super high level. That's exactly right. I mean, as a structural matter, this is about taking decisions about whether we're going to have jobs for our children, whether the food we feed our families is safe, whether we're going to be able to afford medicine, whether we can control our local tax dollars and decide we want them in our own community, spent in our own communities. All of those decisions would be kicked upstairs and away into international fora where we lose control, even though we're the people living with the results. Now, this sounds god-awful, for sure. However, the one upside is this is one of those things where folks across the political spectrum can unite. You, I can take my most conservative friend, my most liberal friend, and my friend who is voting Democrat, Republican, Independent every other election, and this is one thing they all agree on. As Americans, we need to make the decisions about the future of our country, our food safety, we need to control how the laws and policies that will affect us are made, but also what they are. We need to make sure we have good jobs here. We need to make sure we decide what we're going to do in our country for food safety, for the, the health of the environment our kids are going to be playing in. And we can fight about what that means. <laughs> but across the spectrum, people agree 
we can't ship that away. Because here's the other thing. Once these agreements are in place, you can't change a word unless every other foreign country agrees. And they have no expiration date. So it's not like a law where you try something, it, it expires in four years, you look back and say, boy, that wasn't very smart. Thank God that's going away in four years. Uh-uh. This is permanent, and it can't be changed without everyone consenting. So the good news is there is what to really anger, upset, and enrage everybody. And that means we have a majority of Americans across political lines, across regions of the country, across what issues motivate you personally particularly. We have a a matter here where actually we can hold Congress accountable. Now, we can't get put into TPP unless Congress votes for it. And Congress, if they can get their hands on the full text and read it and see it, and again, Congressman Grayson made a truly heroic contribution to that. He was relentless. I mean, the guy was like, you know, a patriot in the Tea Party throwing out bags of tea over a boat, the amount of letters and notes he was hurling at the trade representative's office to try and get them to finally let him look at the darn text. So we need together to make sure Congress keeps normal order. President Obama is going to come to Congress right after July 4th, and he's going to ask Congress for something called fast track. Fast track is this arcane congressional procedure. Just think of it as a fast track to losing our jobs, a fast track to unsafe food in front of our kids. It ties up Congress's hands and steals Congress's constitutional authority sticks it all in a bag and takes it down to the White House. So what it practically does is it writes Congress out of the constitutional power over trade and concentrates all of that authority with President Obama. He wants TPP. He wants to railroad it through Congress. And this fast-track procedure, which, by the way, has only ever been used 16 times in the history of the entire nation, a true abomination, we can stop that because to get that authority would require a majority vote of Congress. And this is one of those issues where, for their own reasons, Democrats largely hate the TPP, and they're really mad at the Democratic president and they, about that, and they don't trust him to have this authority. A lot of Republican members don't even know about TPP yet, but they don't like the president and they don't trust him with any authority. Putting that together, we can make sure, if there's normal order and Congress looks at this agreement, we are not going to be cursed with TPP for our future. Well, let's hope so. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, Twitter tweet from uh, Congressman Grayson f- uh, weeks ago. It's, it's pretty chilling th- to see these comments coming from a U.S. congressman. He said, there is no national security purpose in keeping this text secret. This agreement hands the sovereignty of our country over to corporate interests what they can't afford to tell the American public is that, and then there's nothing there. It says the rest of the seek- a sentence is classified. <laughs> Wait, what, how, why is a why is a trade why is a trade treaty classified as as top secret national security that, that members of the Congress can't read it, can't see it, can't talk about it? Well, see, this is what's just wonderful, because we, you know, you got to ask that question. What's in there that's so secret? They've got, like, the nuclear codes in there? No, they've got all these attacks and basic American rights and freedoms. And the reason they don't want us to see it is they know that, like Dracula, when exposed to the sunshine in the movies, this thing is going to shrivel up and die if Congress and the public got a dose of sunshine on it. So the one hilarious moment comes when the former top trade negotiator, the guy who's the ambassador for trade, a presidential appointee, cabinet member, Ambassador Ronald Kirk, trade representative who's negotiated TPP to date, three years, 17 rounds of negotiations, reporter says to him, Ambassador Kirk, Congress is going on the war path. They want to see this agreement. It's their constitutional right. Millions of Americans have signed petitions demanding to see it. George Bush, in 2001, last time we had one of these big regional agreements, that old one was called the Free Trader of the Americas, he released the draft text publicly on the website of USTR. You guys say you're the big transparency guys. What's happening here? Why aren't you releasing this? And in a moment of unusual candor, the Obama administration's top trade ambassador said, well, 
when they released the last big agreement like this, that FTAA, that Free Trade of the Americas, you know, they just weren't able to sign it once the public got a chance to read it. So we don't think it's a very good idea if we're going to finish this agreement that we make it public. Seriously, he said it on the record. Unbelievable. Now, uh, did you say earlier that uh, President Obama is going to ask for fast-track authority in early July? Yes, that is probably the timeline. So so it, it, and their plan is to railroad this thing through uh, sometime this summer, then? They hope to have the, so that the real fight is about fast-track. TPP's not yet, negotiations have not yet quite finished. It's not signed yet. So what they're trying to do, what they're going to try and do this summer, is get this fast track, this extraordinary authority. And then they'll hold that in their pocket. And they'll hold that in their pocket until they get the TPP done, and then they'll try and railroad it through Congress. Our job as citizens is to keep our mouths open and the fast track out of Mr. Obama's hands. And we can do that very easily, simply, by making sure that each member of our House of Representatives delegation, so, you know, Congressman Posey right now and Congressman Grayson are the two congressmen in the listening area of your radio station right there in Orlando, and all across the country, because we put up by satellite, folks can simply call the U.S. Capitol switchboard and just give your zip code, and they can connect you to your member of Congress if you're not sure who it is. And this is just a good number to keep on the door of your fridge. Just put it on a little sticky page on the front of your refrigerator, 202-225-3121, 202-225-3121, whatever issue is making you crazy. Yeah, that's the Capitol switchboard. You just give them your zip code if you're not sure who your House or Senate, your senators are, your House member is. Now, this fight's in the House. So you say, Here, I'm, uh, here's my zip code. Can you connect me to my member of the House of Representatives? You get there, you ask for the chief of staff. You just say, I'm a constituent of congresswomen, congressmen, whatever is appropriate. And I want to know right now that you will promise me he or she is not going to give up to President Obama that outrageous and extraordinary fast-track trade authority. I want my Congress member to keep their constitutional powers intact. I expect my Congress member to make sure that every word of every trade agreement gets reviewed to make sure it's in my interest and the nation's interest. And that means no fast-track. Will you tell me? Will you send me a letter? Here's my address. Send me a paper letter. I want to hear the position. That kind of accountability on a cross-the-board Democrats, Republicans, and Independents basis is what's going to save us, save the Constitution, save your job, make sure you're not feeding your kid poisonous fish. And uh, make sure you, you, um, you point out you're talking about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Lori, is there more information on the uh, c- citizen website, citizen.org? Tradewatch.org is the shortcut that goes right to the trade part of the website, tradewatch.org. We also have a really good activism website that's called exposethetpp.org, exposethetpp.org. That one has a one-page fact sheet on every one of these issues I've mentioned and more. So Internet freedom, food safety, tax dollars, costs of medicine, job offshoring, foreign corporations' rights, and... In addition, it has some really good action ideas of how to get other people educated and informed, how to take action. We have a very funny letter-writing idea in there where you can basically write to your member of Congress and ask them to send you the text. Now, they're going to supposed to sign it in October, right? So everyone should have the text in Congress by now, right? When you ask your member of Congress is when they realize they've been denied the text. I mean, some of them, like Congressman Grayson, have been real smart about this, and they've been tracking it, and they're wound up, and they've demanded to get it, and they finally got it. A lot of other members are just not paying attention. And some of the members of Congress have no idea what's in there. So take Congressman Posey. So conservative Republican in Florida, the guy got tricked into voting for three of Obama's past trade agreements that have this U.N. tribunal system in it the same way that this TPP is supposed to, where the U.S. gets submitted to the jurisdiction of United Nations and World Bank tribunals, 
and any foreign corporation go sue us outside our courts, outside our laws, claiming that they should get paid our tax dollars out of our treasury for any U.S. law policy or decision that they think undermines their new foreign rights. So they get global government rights from the TPP, and then they get to enforce it at U.N. and World Bank tribunals. And we, the taxpayers, have this incredible threat to our sovereignty and our solvency, and our Congress people generally have no idea it's in there. So again, if you look at Ron Paul talking about some of these agreements in the past, like he's a guy who actually used to read these agreements once they came out, he's a guy who actually warned about these tribunals, and now it's back in TPP. So calling your members of Congress even to tell them, do you support the U.N. tribunals in the TPP? Are you going to give President Obama the fast-track blank check to give away our constitutional rights and ram this thing through Congress? Please tell me what your position is on TPP and Fast Track. A lot of members of Congress getting those kind of calls, those kind of emails, those kind of letters is going to make the difference. All right. And the website's to go to again, exposethetpp.org. That's where you can go and get the basic facts about this top secret treaty. What we've got to do is... Uh, remove it as being a top secret. we got to make sure everybody knows about it. The other website, tradewatch.org. And the telephone number to Congress uh, to reach your member of Congress or Senator, 202-225-3121. Laurie Wallach, thank you so much. Appreciate what you're doing. And uh, thank you for coming by True News today. Thank you very much. You know, and one more thought, folks. July 4th, your members of Congress are going to be at July 4th picnics and parades. They work for you. Just go up to them at the parade and ask them face to face. Hey, you're going to protect your constitutional powers and my rights and sovereignty. You're going to vote against fast track in the TPP. A little face to face is even better than a letter. And with that, I wish you all a happy Fourth of July. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see the faces on these uh, members of Congress, July Fourth. Thank you, Laurie. Appreciate you doing Thank that. You. Take care. Bye.